Throughout history, women have always been expected to feed and care for the people in power. They have never been thought of as being powerful. So, whenever a woman makes her mark on history and comes to power, she is seen as a deviant. Women who have gotten ahead in society by using their sexual skills and seducing men are always seen in a bad light. They were always called dangerous and evil by cynics and enemies because they used courtship to control the men in their lives. But the truth is that these women have gone against the standard that society favors men and have turned the tables in their favor by being smart and charming. In addition to defying social norms, these women also gained from their relationships and used them to their advantage to gain power, authority, and material possessions. These powerful women haven't always had it easy, though. Because of their disrespectful actions, they have been watched, made fun of, and made to feel bad about themselves. It was thought to be wrong and unfit for women to be in charge and have power. So not only were these women called scandalous, but also their private lives were made public. Scarlet women and femme fatale were terms used to describe them. The truth, though, is not in the names people gave them, but in the stories of the brave lives they lived. They were naturally charismatic, driven, and smart, and they also learned to be clever and quick-witted so they could manipulate their way to power. They used their sexuality, which they knew would give them a big advantage, to get guys to like them. Not only did they get rich and live well, but they also got the power and influence that came with it. Even though their names paint a bad picture, they are real-life examples of women who broke the rules and went against the grain to reach their goals. Agnes Sorrel used to dress with one breast exposed. Agnes Sorrel was, as her nickname suggests, a young and beautiful woman who was King Charles VII's favorite lover. Most people agree that Agnes Sorrel was the first official royal lover of a French king. She was also the topic of many paintings and works of art. Agnes Sorrel gave King Charles VII four girls, and the king was very influenced by her. Because of this, the king was able to say openly that he liked the lover, and she began to use her power and authority in the king's court. This affair between the two was also very risky, and it caused a lot of problems and made Agnes Sorrel a lot of enemies. She kept being brave, though, and this was shown by the way she dressed. She always wore clothes that showed off one of her breasts totally. Agnes Sorrel was able to get her family members respected places in the court because she had a strong relationship with and won the love of King Charles VII. But this wasn't the only good thing the king did for her. The king also gave her many jewels, gems, lands, and even her own home. She died after giving birth to her fourth child, which was a sad way to go. Agnes Sorel died in 1450, when she was 28 years old. Many people thought she died of dysentery, but another common theory is that one of her enemies at court poisoned her with mercury. Harriet Wilson used her wit to earn huge sums from her ex-lovers. Harriet Wilson was born in London in 1786. Her book, Memoirs of Harriet Wilson, is well known. Harriet Wilson was one of the most valuable and well-known British courtesans during the Regency period. William, Earl of Craven, took her as his lover when she was only 15. Wilson had a lot of energy and a quick mind, so she was able to charm her way into London's high society. Harriet Wilson knew how to move up in society, so she always aimed high. She surrounded herself with a charming air that made her the most wanted woman in London. Because of this skill and the fact that she was picky about who she slept with, she became the lover of some very important people at the time, such as famous prime ministers, war heroes, and royals. It is known that she knew the Duke of Wellington, Lord Canning, Lord Palmerston, George IV, and a lot of other important people. Since she was the boss of such important people, she was able to make connections that would help her when she needed them. Wilson was about to go broke when she had a great idea for how to solve her problems. She wrote the famous book, Memoirs, in which she told everything about her relationships with the guys she dated. Because of this, she used blackmail as a way to get through hard times. She would tell the men before she published her texts, and she would charge them to keep their identity secret. So she now charged not only for her beauty, but also for her caution. From humble origins, Theodora became an empress. Acacius, who lived in Constantinople and trained bears, was Theodora's father. People say that her mother was a dancer and an actor. 
So Theodora's early life was based on being from a poor background and was far from power and politics. Even though not much is known about Theodora's early life, it is said that she was an actor and a courtesan when she was young. She was the mistress of many important people, and it is said that she became a Miaphysite Christian. She joined forces with Justinian, who was the heir to the Byzantine Empire, when she was about 22 years old. In the end, they both fell in love and chose to get married. At the time, though, a Roman rule said that senators couldn't marry actresses. Justinian thought the answer was easy. He would just change the rules. So the new rule he made said that actresses who had changed could marry outside of their class if the emperor gave them permission. So Theodora rose to power along with her husband, Justinian, who became emperor in 527 AD. Theodora not only helped her husband and gave him advice on important issues, but she also used her power as empress to protect women and children in the country. Theodora had her fair share of foes and enemies, but she became a saint in the Eastern Orthodox Church and was in charge of her own life because of her skills. Cleopatra used her influence as a woman to protect her empire. Egypt was run by Cleopatra for about 30 years. She shares power with her father at first, then with her brothers, and finally with her son. Even though she was known as a femme fatale, a woman whose charms led her lovers into dangerous traps, Cleopatra was a dedicated ruler who would do anything to protect her own kingdom. Cleopatra was smart and devoted to what she wanted. She knew a lot about politics, so her goal was to protect Egypt from the Romans in any way she could. She used her power to seduce the Romans and make them her friends. The famous Julius Caesar is said to have been her first lover. She used her intelligence to win him over, and they even had a child together. But Caesar was brutally killed in 44 BC, and Cleopatra turned to Mark Antony, who had been a friend of Caesar's. They fell in love and got married in the end. Cleopatra and Mark Antony had three kids together. Egypt did get better when Cleopatra was in charge, but that was only for a short time. Even though they were working together, Egypt soon fell into chaos and gave power to Octavian, Caesar's adopted son and heir. Octavian defeated Antony and Cleopatra and added Egypt to the Roman Empire after a fierce battle between the two groups. The story of Cleopatra and Antony's death is well known because Antony fell on his sword when he learned that Cleopatra had killed herself during the war with Octavian. Cleopatra, who hadn't died yet, buried her husband and then killed herself with an asp which is a deadly snake. Agrippina, a powerful Roman empress who seduced her way into power. The Julio-Claudian line was dominated by Julia Agrippina, also known as Agrippina the Younger. Agrippina was born into a royal family. Her father was a well-known general, and her mother was the first Roman emperor's granddaughter. She was connected by blood and marriage to five Roman emperors, which is a shocking fact that shows she was part of the royal family. Her great-grandfather, Great uncle, brother, uncle, and son are among the people she is related to. At the time, Roman elite women were supposed to serve their husbands, brothers, and sons. Agrippina was not ready to live a life for other people because she was cruel and ambitious. Agrippina was not only beautiful, but she was also smart and clever. She had a life full of plans and events, and she used them to get to the top. She is said to have been sent away in 39 AD, because she helped plan a plot against her brother Caligula. But the most interesting thing she did was to get her uncle by blood, Claudius, to marry her. This gave her the name Femme Fatale, and people started to think of her as a mean woman who plotted her way to power. She became the Empress of Rome when she married her uncle, Claudius. Even the Romans didn't like this marriage because they thought it was too close. Agrippina also planned for Nero, her son from a previous marriage, to be next in line to take the throne. Claudius is said to have found out about these plans, but he died soon after, and many people said it was because Agrippina gave him poison. But this made it possible for Nero to become the ruler of Rome. Agrippina's death is also sad because her own son had her killed when he found out about his mother's plots and schemes. We hope you liked this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about civilization or time period we should talk about. Also watch another video here.